Hello and welcome. This screencast is intended to introduce users to Multitext Fax Finder IP Fax Server. This fax server can be used to send and receive faxes over an IP network using SIP and T38. Here we're simply going to go through and send a fax in loopback mode with no PBX interaction. It's going to be a very simple configuration. We're not going to cover a lot of options, uh, just the basics of what you need to perform this simple task. A few prerequisites are a PC, the fax finder IP, and a mail server all connected on the same network. You may also need the RJ45 to DB9 serial cable that is provided with FaxFinder IP. We'll talk about this in a little bit. Now, assuming you're installing the FaxFinder on an existing corporate network, as we'll be doing in our example, you'll need the network administrator to provide you with an IP address for your FaxFinder. Our network is configured for an IP address range of 192.168.51.x. Though our network is set up to provide IP addresses via DHCP, the FaxFinder IP requires a static IP address. So our network provider has set aside IP address 192.168.51.250 for our FaxFinder IP. The default IP address of the FaxFinder is 192.168.2.1. Now you have two options for changing that IP address. The first option is to configure a PC to an IP address in the same network range as the FaxFinder IP and connect via Ethernet to the FaxFinder and then web to it by entering the IP address of the FaxFinder in the URL bar of your browser. So right up here you would put in the IP address. Okay. Uh, the second option that you have for changing the IP address starts by temporarily changing the IP address using the console port. Now this is where you use that RJ45 to DB9 cable that I talked about earlier. So you take that cable, connect from your PC to the console port on the fax finder, then you need to bring up HyperTerminal or some other um, terminal emulation package. And that's what I've done here. These messages you see on the screen are from uh, the previous reboot of the fax finder. So now if I want to change the IP address, uh, the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'll go ahead and type in ifconfig here, which will show uh, the existing IP address. Here's the default IP address I talked about earlier, 192.168.2.1. And I'm going to change the IP address to the IP address that my network administrator has given me, which is 192.168.51.250. Now again, this is just a temporary change, it's not a permanent change. Now when I web into the fax finder, all I need to do is enter in the IP address here. And here you're going to get uh, this message because the connection is going to be a secure connection. So in Firefox, I need to click, I understand the risks, I need to add the exception. Um, this is getting the certificate from the fax finder, so I'm going to confirm the security exception. And from this point forward, um, the browser will allow you to connect in without going through all that hassle. So we can log in here and going into system configuration network settings you can see that the IP address is still at the factory default so it was just temporarily changed to this 51.250 now we want to make that change permanent no, 51.250 we're going to change the default gateway 51.1 is our default gateway. We need to put in a DNS address here. This will be used whenever the fax finder needs to resolve any domain names. We're going to save this. And when we save this, it will require that the unit's rebooted because these parameters have changed. So it's rebooting. If we go back to that console port, um, we'll see the messages here corresponding to the reboot. 
And we need to be a little patient. This takes a couple of minutes for it to reboot. While it's rebooting, the spinner will continue to spin on the screen. This is the last message that it sends when it reboots. So shortly, this will bring the web GUI back up. There we go. Our uh, default username and password, admin, admin. That hasn't changed, but you will want to change that. No. Okay, so system configuration, there are those changes. Good. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to look at is the SMTP configuration. Here we just want to enter in the domain domain name of the mail server and this is an example of where the uh, DMS server is going to be needed from there we're gonna add a user U username to the famous John Doe Password really doesn't matter. Make sure they match. Email. And his phone number and fax number and all that. Really, we can just leave these blank for this purpose. Uh, adding a route, if we check this and put a number in here, then any inbound faxes destined for that extension would get routed to John. I'm not going to do that here. I want to show you another way to enter that. Update. So fax configuration. Now we go to inbound routing here. And this is where we're going to add inbound routing for John. Uh, extension, let's say it's extension 123. Name, I'm going to put sales. Let's say John is in the sales department. Add email to the user John there's only two options right now okay so that's the inbound routing for John uh, we don't need to do anything else here except SIP T38 uh, in order to perform loopback tests we're going to go back to system configuration the network setting the IP address of this box I'm going to copy that go to fax configuration I'm going to paste that in right here and this will uh, this will allow faxes that are being sent out to be directed right back to the same unit. So now we go into our send fax screen. Now here you can just think of this as a um, some user with a fax device, a fax machine, or whatever um, who wants to send a fax to John Doe. So the sender's information will go here, um, recipient here, in this case it's John Doe, um, his fax number 123. Subject, this will show up in the cover page, we're adding a cover, including a cover page here. So um, subject area, comment area. We could add attachments if we wanted, but we're not going to. Kind of the typical options for sending a fax. Send it. Status and logs. 
uh, in status and logs, we look at the fax status. Here we see that it's already sending that fax and it's receiving that fax. Um, you can also check inbound fax log, outbound fax log, and call log to see the results of this once it's completed. So we'll let this complete and then we'll take a look uh, at the mail delivery of this. There we go. So that's complete. So again, if we think about this as somebody has sent a fax, the fax has been delivered to our box here. Uh, now our box through our mail server is going to deliver that mail. And this is the mail delivery here. Went to John Doe. And take a look at it. And there you go. Subject area, comment area from administrator. That's who I was logged into the box as. And that's it. That concludes our introduction to the Fax Finder IP.